might not actually be mercury. The fact that it is mercury can easily be demonstrated with a Jerome mercury vapor analog. The tooth first cooled and then analyzed for mercury snippet. The Jerome shows that there are no emissions. Stimulate the surface. Small explorer, as Craig suggested. And the Jerome takes another 10 second sample. California maximum contaminant level for mercury at the hazardous waste dump is 100. This filling is well over that level, just second of stimulation. Thus demonstrating beyond doubt that amalgams leak mercury anytime they are stimulated. Schließlich wird der Zahn mit einer Kunststofffüllung dauerhaft verschlossen und hoffentlich nie wieder Probleme machen. Ja, das hoffen wir. Zahnarzt Christoph Herrchenröth. Er hat schock die medical und dental Professionen. So much that advocates for continued use of mercury fillings have come up with all kinds of excuses as to why smoking teeth can't possibly be real. They claim that mercury is heavier than air and should fall toward the floor because of gravity. But smoking teeth, the tooth was heated. So hot air rises, carrying the mercury along with it. They claim it is really just water vapor. But water vapor isn't visible under the ultraviolet lighting conditions we used. And lastly, they claim that we haven't proved that it was really mercury coming off the filling. I was about to film a demonstration that proved this beyond a shadow of a doubt. Dr. Roger Eichmann and Dr. David Kennedy set up a phosphorescent screen and light that would be sensitive to mercury vapor coming off the tooth if it was present after even the slightest stimulation. We had teeth with amalgam fillings that would be placed in water of just room temperature to represent saliva in the mouth. I did not truly believe mercury vapor would come off the tooth, or if it did, that the film camera would register it. I also had a video camera on hand to record this event. By shock and horror, and as you can see, the 35 millimeter motion picture camera did register the mercury vapor coming off the tooth. This is the first time in history this has ever been captured on a film camera. To make certain that what you are seeing is mercury, we had on hand a special instrument called a are then lined up one by one on a shaker where they are shaken for a time. With an unsuspecting patient nearby, the capsules are then broken open just as any dentist or dental assistant will do. Will mercury vapor be released? Remember, this is common procedure and goes on each and every day all over the world in dental offices next to innocent patients. themselves for the 
American Dental Association to continue to insist that amalgams are safe would seem absurd. Turn on the light. Can we see what we got? Yikes. Should we exit this? Are we getting poisoned in here? Yes, it's raised the room up. Yeah. Uh, the doors working in the dental office. The problem is now, if you go into a dental office to remove a silver filling, and they cavalierly start putting a drill on, uh, this whole screen would turn black. Mm. Uh, you hit it with a high-speed uh, drill, and you're going to put mercury everywhere. And those very small cuttings of amalgam will go all over. You've got to use a, um, a rubber dam. You've got to use a high-speed evacuator to get all that out. And you never should turn off your evacuator until the last piece is out of the mouth. Because as soon as you scratch on it, it's just like, like me scratching uh, that's okay. iPhone no, here. No, 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 <laughs> Uh, I think it's a crime what they're doing to their dental staff. Is that, that the female is much more sensitive reproductive wise to mercury, and as a result, that causes not only infertility, but it causes birth defects. And of course, you get the usual denial, but when you look at the scientific literature, it is full of studies showing that the exposure to mercury, either from your teeth or from uh, working in a dental office, will, you know, you saw the demonstration. It, there's huge amounts of mercury in those offices. They don't monitor that, they don't warn the employees, they don't give them adequate mask and protection, and as a result, there's a tremendous amount of infertility and dental assistance. There's a documentary on it, and it's about the Norwegian dental nurses, and about their lives being devastated by their job when they were young girls. So, I think it's a crime what they're doing to these young girls. I've had patients come in uh, from other dentists saying, gee, I, all I had was my teeth cleaned, and... I feel lousy for days after that, every time. How come? Well, they polish the teeth. They get a huge amount of mercury being released uh, for several days after that until you get a little bit of uh, corrosion over the top, which slows it down a little bit. Um, but the amount of, of mercury released is just phenomenal. And if they're sensitive to it, it'll put them over the edge. When I was in dental school, I was told that Dentists were averaging the first heart attack by age 44. Our life expectancy was age 52. I personally related that to their use of mercury and amalgam fillings because it wasn't occurring in orthodontics and in, uh, in surgeons.